move through the food world. Right. Um, so there are a lot of ways to answer that question. I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, I I really just relied on reference books. <laughs> I'm a huge nerd. Okay, so this is not this is not um, for everybody. But for me, I treated reference books like they were novels. They were like the greatest love story. You know. <laughs> Jen, I need to, I need to confess something to you. you. Really don't like mushrooms. I hate them. They're like my second least favorite food in the entire world. The first is coconut you. because coconut is the devil's fruit. Interesting. And if, God, and if God didn't want us to get in the coconut, he would not. She would not have created such a hard shell. That's <laughs> what I is what I say. Uh, we are okay. We align on that because I'm allergic to coconut. Perfect. <laughs> You are ba you've been bathed in God's light. Are you drinking something right now? Orange Carbo Crush, and essentially it is a natural wine. So it's an orange wine that's had some skin contact. While I like a lot of wine that is like really funky and that tastes like you're like like drinking somebody's feet that have been marinating. In I the love water, a funky wine. It's more like a orange soda. Sessionable. Oh, okay. Sessionable. I've never heard that phrase. Fun, uh, fancy word that means like you can just get drunk off of it all. <laughs> oh, is that where session ale comes from? Yes. Oh, I'm an idiot. Yes. You have a, a little book. <laughs> So I showed Jen the book when we first logged on. I didn't know it was this small. I, I <laughs> it as a pocket guide to cheese because that is like this fits. Literally pocket size. Pocket. And so I hold it next to my face so you can see how tiny it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, what, it's like four by six. It's like the size of a postcard. Mm -hmm. um, this is, so this is my book. It's called Stuff Every Cheese Lover Should Know. Yeah. Oh, yes, Martin. Grilled cheese, important to have varying levels of meltiness. Um, yeah, it's sort of like graduate level grilled cheese because when you, <laughs> you know, when you start, you're, you're like American singles and butter and the white bread. And then you, you go to college and then you're like, ooh, nicer cheddar, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> different bread. And then, cheeses. Yeah. Multiple and then, cheeses. yeah, graduate level is like adding a jam two kinds of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Call it like the 55 5 rule. Something that's readable at like 50 feet away, and a five feet away rule, and in the five inches rule. First, you get the, the big overall like diagonal layout. Then you get like, you know, like the contrast between the two, and then you get like the details like layered down within each one individually. You're kind of you're kind of mailing <laughs> the different scales. So you're what you're saying is I'm a design genius. Oh, hello friends. How's it going? <laughs> I am Jen De La Vega. Welcome back to Attack the Pantry. Uh, this stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself. Uh, let's be honest, during your adult life. <laughs> um, last time on the show, I did a bunch of guest announcements. Uh, so you can watch all the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos. And the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N. D-L-V. Mm. Uh, how's it going? How are you? How are you all? <gasps> Fancy meeting you here! Hey, Joseph. <laughs> Let me reconfigure uh, the background here for a second. Oh, there we are. Better. 
better. Let's get some business out of the way. Um, so business. <laughs> I'm a Twitch affiliate. So uh, that means you can subscribe to this channel and a little bit of that money goes toward me. Or you can connect your Amazon Prime account to gift a subscription every month to either me or your favorite creators. And that's how we improve our streams month to month. It's pretty amazing. And you get a cute little crown next to your name in the chat. It's very nice. Um, but if you'd like to get to know me and uh, know me and my projects, you can click on the About tab below the video and uh, click around. There's Patreon, there's Etsy, there's Fourth Wall, there's lots of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good time. So welcome. Hello. Hello. Moi, good morning. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Good morning to you. Where are you that it's good morning? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Glad you're here. Um, so, uh, last week we announced a bunch of guests, and guess what that means for today? That means we have a guest. <laughs> oh, Australia. Got it. Okay, got it. Smart. Um, please welcome uh, my guest for this week. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Kelly. You're Whoa. Kelly. Hi Kelly, how do how do I know you? Well, you may have seen me around the Fun City Discord. Yes. Hi Joe. Hi. Hi Mod. <laughs> you Mod. I spend too much time online. No, you don't. And that's fine. It's, it's enough. You mean it's enough? Yes, you mean. just enough. Cody's in the chat. We got the Fleen Machine. Got Emma. We got lots of good folks in the chat. Welcome. Hi, Fleen and Emma. They're Welcome. from my Meat Space chat on Discord. <laughs> cool. Meat Space. Meat Space is a good place. Meat Space <laughs> is a good place because uh, they're all in Toronto and then the rest of us are spread out everywhere else. Oh, cool. Yes. Toronto. <laughs> Toronto, that ca Canada place. Love it. Love bringing the friends. Hey, Luke, what's up? Uh, Lady Applesauce is here too. Wow, the whole crew. I love that the crew is here. Thanks for your support. That is so wonderful. And Cat's um, butt is here. There's Cat. Kapoor! My puppy! Puppy friend! Ooh. Oh, we got a tail wag. That's something. That's something. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, welcome, Kelly. I'm excited to talk to you about food today. Yes. So uh, much food. All yeah. of it. Um, so we're going to dive right in to our first segment, which is show and tell. So folks, if you want to participate in the show and tell segment, uh, you can DM me, you can tag me on Instagram and Twitter with your food photos. Um, and I always tweet every week, like asking, I have a call for photos. Uh, so you can reply to that as well. Uh, but let's, let's see what's new this week in my world. Show and tell. Show, show and tell. tell. Show and tell. Okay. Uh, there's a new culinary the word culinary word of the day episode today. Uh, I I host this pot this other podcast. Uh, they're very short, under five minutes. You learn about culinary words, and then for every three, my co-host and I uh, discuss those sets of words in more detail. Like uh, she asks me clarifying questions, like what do you what do you exactly do you mean by braising <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, so episode six of Echelente, which is our play on Excelente. Uh, <laughs> is up today on all the pod platforms. If you like cooking words and want to learn more about word history, this is a podcast for you. So fun. Um, this week on Patreon, I learned a lot about quail eggs and, and wrote about it. So if you want to learn about quail eggs, it's on patreon.com slash uh, What else is happening? The newest hot dog at Wonderville. Uh, this is a bar that I, I, I curate the food program. It's in Bushwick here in New York. And uh, this this one was called Ocarina of Brine. <laughs> so It's great. It's, it's got a whole pickle spear in there and then a sprinkle of nutritional yeast and lime. Uh, Ocarina of Brine. Very good name. <laughs> um, new development. We have a store for this Twitch channel. And you can get stickers of the emotes. Uh, that we have here and they're all designed by my friend Rachel Viola uh, you can find the link to this uh, in my about panel here on Twitch and you can check out the fourth wall merch section merch 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 Tracy's here Tracy's here merch 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 
Um, so there's stickers, there's hot dog stickers, there's egg stickers, there's a knife sticker, as well as a really cool egg yolk colored um, hooded anorak jacket thing that you pull over your head. Uh, and a hat. Love. Love. I'm waiting for mine to arrive. I'm very excited for them to arrive. The hat or the anorak? Both. I got okay. one. I got one of everything. I was like, listen, I've never had merch before for like my own thing. So this is it's very, so very great. exciting. <laughs> so yeah, y'all can check that out at your leisure. Uh, show and tell time. Dun, da, da, da. Uh, let's see what people made this week. Uh, this is my dad, actually. Whoa. <laughs> he has pretty good photography skills with his Android there, dad. My goodness. Uh, this is a chili cheese dog with onion and barbecue chips. Excellent. Dad is just living. <laughs> oh. uh, drink check, everybody. I'm having a peach seltzer. Ooh. Yeah, Dad De La Vega. He's a hot dog connoisseur. That's probably where I get it. <laughs> Totally my dad. Like, I grew up eating a lot of hot dogs. Mm. Okay, what else is happening? Um, my friend Caroline, who is a film director, uh, she said, I made, oh shit, I have to use these frittata with kale and oyster mushrooms. <laughs> Has this happened to you? <laughs> yes, all the time. <laughs> yeah, oh shit, I have to use this. Yeah, it happens to me and the lettuce a lot. Lettuce is always oh the culprit God. for me in my house. I don't know. What about y'all in the chat? You have a oh shit! I have to use these. <laughs> Any anything that I've purchased at all, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's um, like Caroline, wait, this onion is sprouted. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you can plant that also. I have Make a more... black thumb. <laughs> oh yeah, me as well. At least I thought I did. I thought I had a, a pretty poor uh, thumb, but I've I've kept up my Christmas tree alive for a year. I, I, what? It's a misnomer, actually. Not my Christmas tree. I bought an evergreen that I okay. keep in my living room, and it's still alive. It's in a pot. It's a potted plant. That counts. <laughs> oh, y'all. Oh, okay, okay. We got, we got, we got lots of chat going on here. Man after my own heart, my dad. Uh, we got uh, Topo Chico. Nice. We love. Uh, Moy has to use up a bunch of herbs. I know, I know how that goes. I have a bunch of dill that I need to figure out what to do with. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, I love that. Melt them down and put them in similar- Oh shit, frittatas. Absolutely. <laughs> love. We love that. Um, Caroline had a continuing thought here. Uh, where I was hosting a cooking show that's just <laughs> cleaning up after cooking. I think there's a dose of reality there that is compelling. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't think um, cooking shows tell you more, tell you enough about that that reality. Yeah, getting so, to getting to sink zero is like a goal that I always have, and I'm always like, mm. it's tough. Sink Just zero is really tough. I try, I try, but it, it doesn't happen. But my secret, my secret is that I I scrubby everything at least, so there's no food stuck to anything. That's so I can clutch. Stack it efficiently. And then, uh, you know, then I'll get to it when I get to it. But yeah, I also love this. I love the phrasing of sync zero. It's the hazard of like previously working in tech where people are like, this inbox is for zero. inbox zero. <laughs> it's like, okay. I very much subscribed to that when I was um, working in an office. <laughs> yes. I get you. I know where, it was, where that comes from. Um, this is from my friend Shy, who is here in Brooklyn as well. I made a pork belly curry from a cookbook I got in a white elephant, stir fried tofu with ginger, a flourless chocolate cake, and not pictured fantastic miso pecan banana bread. Ooh. I didn't see that recipe pass me by. My gosh. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> it sounds so good. I keep my keep sink zero by mopping the floor in front of the sink. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry to talk about dishes, everybody. You know, it's it's the harsh reality of cooking for yourself is that oh no, there's dishes now. <laughs> ah, thank you, David. David has posted the recipe to the New York Times there in the chat. If y'all want to check it out, grab that for yourself. Uh, David's continuation. So good at getting those recipes. Ah, Just yes. Like that. Thank you very much. 
yeah, How to Do the Dishes is a great little book. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this is the aforementioned flourless chocolate cake. And then the book, this is actually by someone that I know, Eric Kim, who does a lot of correspondence for the New York Times cooking section. Uh, fantastic food writer. Um, he has this really cool article called You Can Kimchi Anything. I <laughs> oh, no. Y'all should look that up. <laughs> Emma, I feel you. Every day I wake up and have to wash dishes. This is my life. <laughs> this is my life as well. Um, yeah, I'm a constant chef here and I'm always testing cookbooks. So I'm just constantly doing dishes. Uh, I need a dishwasher someday. One day. One day. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, Danny. Granted, there are no greater feelings than having a moment mid cooking to clean dishes and then realize you have tasty food and almost no dishes to clean. Absolutely. Got it. Yes. Y'all are just on our wavelength today. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, we have a green papaya salad with tea, smoked salmon from Daniel. My goodness. <sighs> Sigh. Oh yeah, there you go. Thank you for this. Oh, that's you. Great. <laughs> Thanks for sending it in. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I just got turned on to green papaya for like the first time. My sister and I got Thai food and yeah. she was like, this is the best thing that I had everywhere in Thailand, everywhere around. <laughs> and I was like, okay, just, just tell me, just give it to me. <laughs> It's like a side of slaw, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it lasts forever and is so crunchy and really flavorful. Like papaya is so green papaya, unripe papaya specifically is so interesting. Um, if you boil it, it acts like potato kind really? of. Really? Yeah. It's closer to like chayote um, texture. But yeah, you can you can boil it, you can mash it. It acts like a tuber. But um, if you shred it uh, like... Uh, Daniel did here um, it becomes like salad like uh, so you would toss it in some salt to, to loosen it up and it becomes more noodle like um, there is a lot of Southeast Asian food that is prepared this way and so um, one of them so this is one way is the green papaya salad and then in my family we make achara which is papaya pickle Ooh. that we put on everything I put it on hot dogs like <laughs> Have it with a side of fish, like you have it with like a roasted fish. It's it's so good. Here, wait, let me get the um, uh, link for that. You y'all can figure out how to make this with with uh, my recipe. Yeah. Here, uh, do, 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 beep, 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 beep. clicking around, clicking around, clicking around. Here it is. Is it like a quick pickle with just vinegar and a little bit of sugar, or? It's it's got like a sauerkraut kind of uh, uh, process where you have to squeeze out the liquid, but sure. here, here's that recipe for everybody if you want to try that out sometime. Uh, okay, so what is next on the slides here? Um, Tracy, this is from Tracy in the chat. Behind the scenes of my double chocolate espresso cookies over the holiday, I didn't have a real hand mixer, so I had to improvise. <laughs> that is so baller. <laughs> I've always joked about doing this, but I've never actually done it. So it's so smart. <laughs> Tracy, this worked. <laughs> I mean, I would be afraid of getting it everywhere. That's the question. If it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Did it get everywhere, Tracy? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, fully tracks for what it sounds like. <laughs> it oh wait, where is it? It was high powered. <laughs> I imagine you would need something with just like the highest wall bowl. Oh no, there was butter Oof. everywhere. Okay. Yeah. I'm turning off my space heater. I'm getting too hot. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Shake hands with danger. <laughs> that rules. Oh man, David. Oh my gosh, David. One of the things I missed from our old apartment in California was a giant mortar and pestle I got in a Thai grocery store making some tum and pounding fish cakes. That sounds so cool. <laughs> My mortar and pestle is very small, so I can't really do big stuff in it. But one oh, day. I, ha I have a mortar and pestle. That's fun. I forgot that I had that. <laughs> all right. What's going on here next? Oh, Tracy, you texted these to me. These are all Final Fantasy <laughs> Food memes. Uh, 
and we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about uh, recreating food from Final Fantasy in a future stream. So let's do it. <laughs> um, and Tracy was telling me there's a guy I think in Final Fantasy VIII whose whole thing is hot dogs, and that's the guy on the right. Just loves hot dogs. <laughs> So you'll see Tracy here uh, getting the notion plan ready. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I actually don't know the names of the characters, Tracy. If you can help me uh, fill in the blanks here, uh, but this is hilarious. I can't wait for Final Fantasy stream. I also think I should play Final Fantasy for me to actually get it. It's a good time. Oh, Noctis is the ramen guy. There you go. Um, on the left here, I have some tamarind chicky tendies <laughs> with some ranch dressing. Yes. And on the right, I learned how to make Vietnamese yogurt uh, on the stovetop. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, if you can Google a recipe uh, for making yogurt at home, it's very, very easy. Uh, you make a mixture. It's Yeah, you make a mixture. And then you put it in jars, close up the jars, uh, boil a pot of water, and then let that cool down until it's about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you put the jars in there and then close it and leave it. For like six hours. Really? And you get yogurt. It's crazy. That's so... I can't imagine making my own yogurt. It's totally within reach. Totally <laughs> within reach. It's amazing. Oh. Did you flavor it? What did you do? Um, this particular recipe that I was um, testing has uh, condensed milk in it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oops, I think I have a delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second, everybody. <laughs> I thought this would have been me that no, would have done this. It's me. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I'm going to... Oh, crap. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to put up the starting soon video again, Kelly, and I'll bring us both back on after I check the door. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> Bingo, BRB. let's do it. The RB. Welcome to Attack the Pantry, the musical. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I'm not going to, I would, I would join you, but I didn't, I don't want you to lose viewers. No, that's a, it's all right. <laughs> they brought this on themselves by redeeming the sing along. <laughs> what have you wrought upon us? A few bad dudes. You gotta, you gotta give it up for a few bad dudes. They're gonna, they're gonna make you sing. Y'all, this is the first time that I've had to do this. <laughs> and maybe I don't have to keep going up. I can go down. Go down. <laughs> you can always go down. Oh, see, wonderful. You have a wonderful singing voice. <laughs> Many in my life have disagreed. No, not at all. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I really did get a delivery right now. <laughs> I, it's going to happen to me every once in a while. That's so funny. That was Joe Lepore. Yes. Um, he was on the show uh, last year and somebody activated the uh, sing for five minutes option oh, in your gosh. channel points. And it was really fun. He was a really good sport about it. <laughs> um, whoa. Daniel, thank you so much for subscribing. That's so nice of you. Appreciate it. Um, let's get back to the slides here. Okay, yeah, so making yogurt. You can do it at home. It's so good. And oh, Flynn yeah. said condensed milk run through, runs through my veins. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm being, I've been going through a lot of condensed milk uh, lately because I've been working on a bunch of Vietnamese recipes, so there's a lot of condensed milk. Oh, yeah. But it, it, it's such a good addition to so many things. It's yummy. Without, you know, adding too much sugar. I like I like that versus adding granulated sugar to my tea. Yeah. Oh, see, look. Your Instant Pot has a yogurt setting, but I have not tried it. See, yogurt is within reach. <laughs> <laughs> what else is going on here? Um, last night, I had this brilliant idea to make sliders out of garlic knots. 
Oh. Yo. <laughs> oh my god. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. So I have a chicken salad here with uh, lettuce and Thai basil uh, in a garlic knot. So smart. <sighs> Blew my mind. You had big brain moment. A big brain. It happens once in a while. <laughs> I mean, probably more than once in a while, but I totally would absolutely eat this. Right? Yeah. Yes. Good quick snack. You know, my ha I have this funny habit of whenever I go to a pizza place, I'll always ask for garlic knots, even though I'm not hungry for them, for this reason. <laughs> I mean, perfect. You're already at the pizza place. You may as well get the garlic knots right? and then figure out from there. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about breakfast let's talk about let's breakfast talk about breakfast it's my favorite uh, thing it's also my favorite thing i insist yes. on having breakfast every morning i i used to not be like this uh, i used mm -hmm. to have a lot of um stomach issues when i was like in high school age yeah. uh so i would skip breakfast because i i would just feel so sick to my stomach every time um but i don't know something about uh I don't know, something about my body changed. I can handle it now. Like <laughs> You can handle the eggs. I can handle breakfast. Um, also, I think it's because I was rushing so much when I was younger. Yes. You know? Like, I think you're you're rushing to get out of the house. It's early. You don't want to be awake. Mm -hmm. So that, kind of, that couldn't mess with your stomach. Um, Definitely. But yeah, I, I'm a big breakfast person now. And I'm, obviously, my identity is, is rooted in eggs. These days. All eggs all the time. All eggs all the time. Yeah, Luke, yeah, Luke knows what we're talking about. Like, same, start his breakfast in college. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I take my time with it and I I really uh as an adult, I really cherish it. Like it is my sacred time. Like, mm -hmm. do you have a breakfast routine, Kelly? I don't have a breakfast routine necessarily, but it's always like you know, one of those things where, especially like, I have to take medication in the morning, so I gotta eat something. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, I mean, I do a lot of make ahead waffles. And <gasps> I have, mm -hmm. Cool. Yes, and I freeze them, and then I just like throw them in my oven for you know on warm while I walk walk the dog outside, oh and then God. I come back in, and they're actually D20 shaped. No. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's actually a terrible waffle maker and I probably should get rid of it, but I don't have backup. So, <laughs> so everything is D20 shaped right now. I love, I love one order of Kelly waffle, please. Yes. <laughs> this is extremely Kelly. <laughs> and, and honestly, this is the most, this is the most me thing. Uh, like some of the lights don't work. One of the glass has broken, but it's fine because I can do it by sound a lot of the time. Yes. Sound and smell. I mean, you'll see that it's steaming. Uh, you'll smell that it's toasty. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely those are those are good indicators of waffle doneness. But the making a waffles ahead of time is such a a great move because oh, you yeah. can always freeze them. Freeze it. You yeah. love it, and then toast them up. Like it saves you so much time. It does. And it's so much cheaper and like better than an ego. Yeah. Which I've eaten a lot of egos in my life. Same. I'm not going to, I'm not going to downplay it. I love them. I ate them a lot in daycare when I was little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny, I am also like you. I'm someone who also gets sick of eating any one food too yes. consistently, except for breakfast. I can definitely eat an egg every day, um, but I do have to change the egg. <laughs> you got to change up how it's made. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, here we go. Um, we got Daniel here. Love a good breakfast. Australia has great breakfast cafe culture, too. When I travel, I'm always looking for the best breakfast spots. <gasps> yes. Name drop. Name drop your favorite bre breakfast spots. Even though I'm not there, I would like to know anyway. I would like to know just in case, like, whenever, you know, in the next 10 years when I am in Australia. Yeah. I'm make that move. <laughs> yeah. Fun city uh, tour. We we yes. we do a live show in Australia one day, and we can even have, get breakfast. Hey, Nadpod is going to Australia this year, so. Whoa! I mm -hmm. didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. Here we got Danny. I've had the same breakfast nearly every day for <laughs> two plus years. A breakfast sandwich of egg, American cheese, impossible sausage on a Kaiser roll. Hell yeah! That sounds good. Oh. Yes. Oh, you do the melt thing. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. 
so smart. That is, that is God tier. I remember God that we had tier. this conversation, Danny, on the Discord where like I made a really good like baguette breakfast sandwich and then I wrapped it up and then I walked to the dog and then I came back and everything was melty and perfect. Mm. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing worse than opening a bagel when with like a cold ass cheese slice on it. Yes. Like I just to like somebody toasted this and then put this cold ass cheese. Very cold cheese. Twos, I actually haven't made any non waffle thing in this waffle maker partially because it really, I think I got it from like five years ago for $5 at the <laughs> like Think Geek. Uh, liquid mega sale, sale. Yeah. yeah no that's what it, it I remember <laughs> I remember that yeah it was great a five dollar waffle maker check mm -hmm. yeah but so I mean I don't trust it to do anything but waffles <laughs> you haven't tried ha uh, tater tots no but I do tater tots for other things hot waffle hot waffle mm. is really good you just defrost the tots and okay. then swoosh them and then you can melt cheese on that afterward. Oh my and god. Get I'm real gonna, crispy. I'm gonna have to do that. Okay. All right. You've you've convinced me. It's good. It's going down on my Oh, we got the notebook. Notes. We got the notebook. <laughs> yeah, it's the notepad that has like, oh no, that's the wrong pen for that. It has like movie notes of what to download. Oh, and also still fleet notes. <laughs> oh, great. Love that still fleet. Yes. Uh, we got a question here from Tish. Do our hosts believe in the concept of breakfast food or is any food breakfast food if you eat it in the morning? Any food is breakfast food if you eat it early enough. I agree. I yeah. agree. Um, I, I sometimes have a lot of breakfast food in the evening. Yes. <laughs> breakfast for dinner <laughs> is, is so good. Traditionally understood breakfast for dinner items, but yes. most of the time you'll catch me eating leftovers for breakfast oh, with, yeah. a, with an egg on top. Um, oh, Jen, have you mm. ever made pizza eggs or my version of pizza eggs? What do you mean? Explain this to me. Okay, so you take some leftover pizza if you are blessed enough to have it, and then you chop it up, throw it in a dish, and you beat some eggs, like, you know, maybe four or five eggs, and add in a little bit of half and half and, like, some sriracha and some... If you have it ricotta, throw oh, that in there and God. some more cheese because that's just like what Jeez. we do. And then you uh, prep that and pour pour the egg mix on top and let it sit overnight. And then you bake it. Pizza eggs. Yo, the soaking overnight is clutch. Mm -hmm. that is oh, yeah. And then it's like step. savory bread pudding. You're blowing my mind. I love that. That is such a good idea. Cheese. Yes. Oh, more cheese on top. More it's cheese. It's just all cheese. all cheese. I love that. And I swear, wrapping a breakfast sandwich is the only reason a deli breakfast sandwich is better than most homemade. Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. Wow. So many of you. Owen's here. So many folks are in the chat. This is amazing. Yay. Since I got my rice cooker last Christmas, my fancy breakfast meal is Tamago Kake Gohan. Crack an egg on hot rice. Hell yeah. I'm Ooh. into that. Yeah. I mean, yes. in the Philippines, we call that silog. But it's Ooh. like garlic fried rice mm -hmm. with an eggy. And then your protein of choice. Oh, silog. perfect. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> your breakfast is intense amounts of coffee. <laughs> Kelly, do you yeah. drink coffee? Oh, yes. Yes. Ah. Uh, I've been, I, I've been making cold brew a lot, uh, even in the dead of winter. I'm just like, this is cold brew time. I'm learning about coffee because my partner drinks coffee. Um, and this Vietnamese book that I'm working on um, introduced me to a, a fin filter, a fi, 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 film filter. It's P-H-I-N. It's like okay. a Vietnamese um, kind of drop filter. It's pretty interesting. Um, you, you put in, it's like this little metal cuppy that sits mm -hmm. on top of your cup it was a double filter sy system going on but it's this little cuppy and you you put two tablespoons of grounds in there you tamp it down and then you pour like a tiny bit of hot water so mm -hmm. that it, it blooms and then you you let that sit for like 30 seconds and then you fill it up and then it will slowly drip down it's this cute oh. little device uh so i've learned how to make egg coffee with it 
Okay, that sounds Y'all, incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In, in Vietnam, there is a, a whipped egg topping you can put on your coffee. It's mm. one egg yolk uh, whipped with a tablespoon of condensed milk. Of course, you would find a way to put eggs in coffee. Of course, I did. <laughs> And then you just pour that on top of your hot coffee and it, it just like, it's kind of like a frothy, it's kind of like that Dalgona trend that was mm -hmm. happening. But it, yeah, I'm just like not a coffee drinker. So I'm, I'm, I'm just learning about it. <laughs> what's the Dalgona? Is that just like the coffee crystals? Cause I do the coffee crystals and, uh, water and sugar and I beat that. And I love that on just like topping that on milk. I think the Dalgona thing was like really frothy coffee oh. i don't okay. exactly remember what the method was because i don't i don't drink it so i don't know right so um, you were just like it's fine smooth brain did off. I, I, yeah i was like okay that's what people are doing all right <laughs> I, yeah. oh, man it's, it's great that there are so many folks in the chat i'm trying to catch up here uh cold pizza is breakfast food for sure yeah yes all day oh here you go tish <laughs> I had a Reuben for breakfast and I feel validated. Was that today, Tish? <laughs> Good choice. Um, yeah, pizza strata, but make it out of pizza, Big Brain Kelly. Mm -hmm. And we do love to egg, for sure. Yeah, the, the pizza eggs was like a thing that my ex taught me, but I kept it because I'm like, this is mine now. Yeah, yeah. Totally this... keep good recipes. Yeah, you have uh, to. Tish got a trick here for homemade breakfast sandwiches. Drop a tablespoon of water in the pan and cover it with a lid to simmer for 30 to 60 seconds. Makes things melt and meld together. Yo, steam. Yes, steam Quickly is so steam. good. That's really great. Oh, yeah, you know what the fin filter is. Like a top hat for your mug. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 You've yes. seen those. Okay. Oh, great. Make a big batch of cold brew for the week ahead as well. Means I'm going to the office. Something quick and easy to have in the morning. I love these hacks. Yes. These are all I fantastic. also, for when I make my cold brew, I usually put in, like, instead of making a simple syrup or, like, putting in granulated sugar, like, maybe half, a, maybe, like, a teaspoon of maple syrup. Oh, <gasps> nice. So good. Nice. Oh, Kelly, yes. I, can, I can tell that you really enjoy your mornings. I, it, <laughs> it takes me so much effort to get out of bed that when I do, I'm like, okay, well Treat now yourself. I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Fleen, here we go. Uh, all my life breakfast <laughs> has been rice with leftovers. This sounds like a very me thing as well. Like my whole family likes to eat rice with leftovers. Didn't even know food like toast or eggs or bacon was known as breakfast food. Uh, yeah, I didn't really have that stuff until after I moved out of my parents' house. <laughs> I was a rice household growing up, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we did, oh. we did so much cereal. And I was the third child, so by the time that my parents got to me, they were just like, whatever. <laughs> eat, eat the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Um, you also sent me a photo Ooh. of a lovely looking egg. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at look her. Look at this. Look at her. Look at that her. Is Don't a, look that away. is a crook, madame. And oh my god. I I had it when I was in New York. And uh, that was like for my birthday weekend. I went with yeah. my parents. Cute. And I got that. And I was just like, this is the most beautiful, fun city <laughs> Mrs. Egg sandwich I could get. Yeah. And they gave you chips as well <laughs> the chips were pretty good the chips were good to like dippy they make them the, there i think probably i, I think so Looks i don't like even know it. where it was <laughs> somewhere oh in God. like midtown uh danny has a comment here i have a few vegetarian friends that cite cheese as the reason they can't go vegan for me it's the eggs yeah same it's eggs and cheese for me eggs well, and, and cheese and hot dogs so i'm like, oh, kind of I, idle. I could never really be vegan <laughs> Though I tried once in my life. I did, did you? Yeah, I was vegan for like six months. So All right, it, it, all was right. a, it was a nice inquiry into my boundaries. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> right. Do I like this? No. Nah. No. No. But I can say I tried. You did. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen also here. Wait, let me see. Uh, Present. Share screen. It's going to look a little cray. Oh, no, it won't look a little cray. Because check this out. We're going to share Kelly's watercolor. This is the egg watercolor that you sent me Eggy. in the mail. It's not low res, I promise. It's watercolor. Um, And I love that you have the shine on the yolk there. 
<laughs> I have to get the shine. Have yeah, I was I was like really wanting to paint an egg and then I was like, I know who needs this. That was a nice view. I think that's kind of what solidified this uh this friendship. <laughs> this camaraderie. Love over of eggs, eggs and painting food. <laughs> yeah. Um you also sent me a few other dishes that you were proud of. Uh if you wanna if we wanna tackle these. Yes. Look at these. Folks. So in addition to breakfast food, I'm also like top tier dessert maker <laughs> because everyone else in my family is actually like good at cooking and I'm just like, meh, meh, I can, I can deal, uh, but I can bake. Hell yeah. Yes. So what I have those? for me. Those are just like chocolate chip cookies, but I also grated in some like dark chocolate into Ooh. the, into the batter. <gasps> And then sprinkled with some mountain salt. You know, oh. you know how you do. Oh, you salt bathe that. Oh my gosh. Yes. And great. you salt right after they come out of the oven until yes. you like put them. they're still soft. Well, they're still soft and they can like just pat, 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 pat in. I love that. I like the combination of both the chocolate chips and the shards. Yeah. Because they break differently when you bite into the, the cookie. Yeah, and and the the shaved chocolate didn't really like melt or get into the batter too much, so it was kind of just like an undercurrent of this like <gasps> dark bitter. I mm -hmm. love using the word undercurrent. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm all about cool... words. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's Thanks that for bass by, note. David. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, David. See you. Bye, David. Um, sorry, I interrupted you. No. Uh, wow. Okay, Cody says breakfast and dessert are Jason in my head. It's all about the baked goods. Mm, yes. Yum. Yes, I feel that. <laughs> and then like so my <laughs> lately my my lazy person dinner because I haven't been able to like cook really or like have the have the get up and go to cook mm. has been roasting broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, okay, this is this is foodish. This is food enough. So I'll like uh, toss it with some olive oil and some, I have this Trader Joe's, um, I think it's a jeet spice or Ooh. it's some kind of like uh, Eastern European of some kind, but it has uh, like marigold and so much paprika and garlic. What? And like, it's so good. It's I've so good. I've never heard of that combination. That's cool. Yeah. So I just like put a ton of that and then I throw in some panko and some uh Crunchy. salt and pepper oh. and, and parm and then bake it yo you Kelly's mm -hmm. broccoli recipe is sounds so good <laughs> so that's my that's my like uh I need to convince myself to eat so I'm just gonna make yeah. this <laughs> I get you I totally understand what you mean uh I I have this, I started buying, um, I shop at this Asian uh, grocery delivery service and they have this savory egg tofu that's like pre-packaged and it's, it's egg tofu that's been steamed with like, um, like fish sauce. And so it's like got light savoriness to it. Mm -hmm. And so I'll eat that cold with like crispy garlic and scallions on top. And sesame Ooh. seeds, and that's it. Like it's yes. it's been it's been so good. Uh, Tuz, it's Asian veggies, and it's only here in New York. <laughs> Dread. Unfortunately, uh, but I'm sure if you look at like we, I think there's there's we Asian delivery service uh, might have it as well. How many E's <laughs> on that one? Three. Okay. <laughs> and Owen is so right about like cooking the the, the broccoli trunk. stock. Yes. Yeah. It, it tastes different. It's like when you roast like a cauliflower steak. It turns mm. out, mm hmm, it's some good stuff. Yeah, death. I I I make sure to like shave that part of the broccoli stalk because mm -hmm. you know it's hard to get your teeth through sometimes when you don't cook it all the way. Yeah. Um, so it can be a good uh, base for slaw as well. Yes, I've had I've had broccoli slaw that I really like. Mm, with some good mustard. Mm, um, I'm not a mustard lover. You're not a mustard lover. We found Kelly's line. <laughs> That's okay. It's so bad. That's okay. <laughs> yes. 
mustard so funny. mustard she's not my i'm not a friend mine mine is bell pepper i cannot eat bell peppers okay i mean that's fine i'm on you <laughs> i'm with you on that the truth comes out that truth that truth comes out no shame here on this on this stream no shame, no shame. just no mustard hold the mustard just, okay <laughs> I, I will put mustard when I make like mac and cheese. I'll put mu powdered mustard in the roux because that just it That's makes a good it note. so much yeah. better. Yeah. yeah. Undertone again. Let's just undercurrent. Mm -hmm. Undercurrent. I like I like that we're saying undercurrent. That's so cool. It's such a great way to describe flavors and layering because it's, yes. it's such a dynamic relationship and uh, it's not just like a singular description of food. So I, I really like that. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm getting called out. Hate bell pepper, but love paprika? Yes. 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 <laughs> it's, it's easy, Gabby. Come on. It's the nasal. I don't know what it is about bell pepper smell when it gets near my mouth. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh no. I'm like, no, no. I, I feel that I can, way about celery, and it's so I can so taste it immediately. Bizarre. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't know why. I just don't like it. Yeah. I feel that. Um, like what else is happening here? Oh, okay. So you have a really special thing in your family and it's this book yes so my mom uh like like i said we're all kind of cookers um to different various degrees uh but my mom has like a uh it's basically like a card catalog box of recipes mm. and so she scanned a lot of them and uh built this book for all of us girls I only have sisters. There's, it's just all of us girls. Right. Got it. Got it. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a, it's just a really nice thing. She does, she does a lot of these book things, but uh, the recipe book is one of my favorites. And then this past year she did one of like pictures of my grandmother from back. Aww. Yeah. So like pictures going back a hundred years of like the family from France and everything to, you know, when she moved back over here. Yeah. Oh, look, we got we got reacts from the chat from Owen. Oh, wow, this book. And Cody's like, McKelly family recipes. They do <laughs> exist. I think this is so special and so cool because uh, I was talking to you before we went live that, you know, my family doesn't do this. My family was not a recipe card family. Um doesn't really keep track of that stuff and me as a food writer like I'm going back and like trying to document this stuff like I have to chase down people and interview them yes. and record them because they're not gonna type things at me like my 89 year old grandmother is not gonna absolutely open not. a google doc <laughs> so this stuff's really important uh and special and I, I think it's such a cool way to like document your your family's history really and it's, it's funny because my mom is very much, she doesn't use a lot of recipes. So it's, it's funny that we have a book of recipes when she doesn't <laughs> use a lot of them. And a lot of her recipes are like fully just grease stained and missing half of what's supposed ah. to be on them. Like there's, you know, there's probably not going to be a temperature on 50% of what's in this book. <laughs> I mean, this is part of the charm though. It's like a puzzle. Yeah, you have to guess. You have to do best guesses. <laughs> now, let's take a look. Uh, we have some examples here. Chex yes. Mix family favorite anytime. If you haven't made your own Chex Mix, you, you, you did a mistake. You did a mistake. <laughs> and you have to add in like so much extra Worcestershire and everything. And it like, you know how you seek out those bagel chips that have all mm. of the seeds? on them yes you can make an entire batch that's just that oh 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 and what is checks oh and what oh and <sighs> really oh my I, gosh oh i guess you don't have checks where you are it, it just might not be in ireland yeah but it's it's like cereal <laughs> yeah it's a cereal it's, it's like a, a, a thatched cereal thatched cross hatch cereal they're little squares and they're very crunchy um, and so there's a famous recipe on the back of the cereal box mm -hmm. for savory chicks mix. So it's like um, butter, Worcestershire sauce, garlic powder. What else is on here? Nuts, pretzels. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like an American. Yeah. It's a gas station favorite when yeah, you're going on like, road trips yeah. is to get a Mountain Dew and then some Chex Mix if you're me. 
Yeah, so the recipe was so famous, they started to package it and sell it. So it's still on the boxes, but uh, you can now buy it <laughs> as a finished product. But um, here we go. Uh, I think Joseph said, Chex Mix Bowl doesn't even come close to making your own. And I agree with that. Like making your own Chex Mix is going to be way more flavorful than yes. just buying it. <laughs> and uh, what's what's neat is that my one sister is fairly gluten intolerant, so we use all of the like gluten free, gluten free pretzels. Oh, we'll that's cool. Use the the corn checks and the rice checks, but none of the wheat checks. So that's you can great. like craft it so that she can still enjoy it. I love that the, like Kelly is annotating the family traditional recipes. Like that's that's what's so <laughs> cool about it. You can like put your own spin on it. Yes. Um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, Lady Applesauce. This is so important because when my mom passed, we lost recipes. Yeah, that's why this is so important. My sister and I have tried to reconstruct some, but some stuff is just fully gone. Um, yeah. And I, I'm sorry for that. But also, like, yeah, really driving home the point how, like, how special this collection is. And, like, how food it feels like home for so much. Yeah. Because, like, Chex Mix is, like, okay, I'm thinking that it's fall or winter and this is like set out in a weird little dish before everyone comes over for like Christmas Eve or something. Mm -hmm. It's like so, the, the snack bowl. Yes. Tell me about these lemon pepper pretzels. Oh, okay. Lemon I, I pepper love pretzels. lemon pepper in general. So. <laughs> oh, then you're going to love this. Please keep this recipe <laughs> and make them. This is like one of my aunt's favorite thing to do. And uh, my sister tried to make it this year and she burnt the hell out of the pretzels. Oh no. And she, she like tried to save some of them, but it, just, it was unsalvageable. But it's like, so it's another thing that Owen won't recognize. Ranch, powdered ranch. Ranch powder. <laughs> it's not over in the UK, but um, it's like a random herb, urban spice mix. <laughs> it's buttermilk based powder that has yes. like chive and tarragon in it. Um, and then you reconstitute it in sour cream most of the time or or buttermilk itself but uh in this particular recipe you're using just the powder to flavor the pretzels <laughs> yeah exactly so you like mix up your oil and all of the spices and everything and then you roll roll your pretzels around in it and then you bake it off and it's just ah uh, perfect so good yes <laughs> poor owen had to google a bunch of words tonight garlic knots egos bless your heart thank you for googling <laughs> Oh, uh, and Tuz here. My father keeps talking about my Chinese grandma's cooking and she left no recipes because I guess Asians just keep cooking as an oral tradition. It's true. Uh, yeah. It's very, very true. Um, from my own experience, I can tell you that a lot of it is oral tradition, uh, which is why I would record uh, relatives on my phone while I'd sit them down and be like, can you tell me that your shrimp recipe very quickly? And they'll be like, you have to go get this thing and this thing. And I'm like, can you explain what that is? <laughs> Did your relatives ever specify, like, you have to get it from this grocery store? Because or, like, yeah, this one grows in our backyard or something like that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I don't have that here. Uh, so, like, I don't even know what the name of this vegetable is or it's, like, a aromatic, but it's called batuan. Mm -hmm. And I asked my uncle, like, what is a batuan? And he goes, you need only batuan. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... That doesn't answer my question. <laughs> I know. I was like, yo, what? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that reminds me of my grandmother. Like, she would use this one scoop for something. And we were always like, well, how much is that scoop? Like, it, what's, <laughs> what's the measurement? And she was like, I don't know. I got it out of the laundry box. No! The laundry cup. Ages and ages ago. 20 Grandma, no. Plus. Yes, no. Grandma, that's no. Fortune did not care. <laughs> Grandma, no. Grandma, Toxic. yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, here we have some intel from Australia, a similar thing called nuts and bolts, which uses Nutri-Grain instead of Chex, and the packaged French onion soup for flavoring. <gasps> Sounds, yes, this is definitely the same family. <laughs> I want to switch that out and try it. That sounds mm -hmm. so good. Yes. Oh, and that you're definitely would work. You're so right. We're doing American exceptionalism tonight. <laughs> I know. I was very sorry. No, don't apologize. It's fantastic. Uh, we have I a. 
I haven't oh, sorry, mentioned Scrapple yet. So, I mean, that's like a very niche Baltimore slash Rust Belt thing. Yeah, that is something I definitely loved uh, making. But let me just catch up here with Luke. My mom makes a Chex Mix for me every Christmas. Cashew caramel coconut. Wow. If I wasn't allergic to coconut, I would indulge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, so I will. <laughs> That sounds uh, so good. This reminds you of Bombay Mix. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, That same. sounds good, too. Uh, whoa, hack for the lemon pepper pretzels. You got Ooh. oyster crackers instead. Okay. I'm about that. I would eat that. I would eat that. I would wonder just, like, the amount of oil that's in that recipe. <laughs> and, like, you would have to make sure not to, like, soak, not soak to the soak oyster it. crackers too much. Yeah. I get you. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. What is what else did you send me here? What did uh, I? Kenny's. <laughs> My slippers in here. Oh, your slippers. <laughs> she didn't use them as often. We know she usually cooked from the heart. That is so cute. This is a yes. soup. This is a soup. Um, I honestly like. I can't even read this, but this oh, it's is in like, French. Yeah, it's all in French. This is my French grandmother's. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, but courgette. You know what a courgette is? Yeah. Harry Cover. I think okay. it's just like a vegetable soup. Uh, yeah. Le soup au pitou. Uh, the thing that I know about pitou is there's a goat cheese from that area oh. called shabishu. And so it's shabishu de potou. Oh, that's amazing. Isn't that cute? <laughs> yes. I love this. We're going to have to zoom in later and like pick it apart. Yeah. I'm sure I can recognize enough words in here to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, there's uh, grains, tomatoes, you know, pepines. Shit. So that's probably, I don't know if that's like a Pepper. pepita, maybe. Pepe. I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure that out later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meaning. Pepin, meaning. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really say. Uh, oh, seeds. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Pip. A pip. Yes. So, like, I'm I'm fairly conversational in French, but I'm not. The writing is difficult to do. No, I chose Spanish in high school. <laughs> I chose I chose Spanish in high school too. But I like my mom was is very fluent in French, and then my grandmother would just speak French whenever. Oh. <laughs> I mostly know curse words that tracks. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, something hilarious happened while uh, I was home for the holidays. And my parents do this. Uh, I'm sure other folks who have immigrant parents also do this. But uh, my partner is meeting them for the first time. Mm. And A, great, awesome, really fun time. Yes. But uh, they started to argue. My parents started to argue. And then when they realized we were in the room with them, they switched languages. They switched, oh. to, Tag they switched to Tagalog. And mm -hmm. they purposefully did not teach it to me. <laughs> so I was like... We still, oh. we still know you're arguing, guys. <laughs> you just don't know what they're saying, but yeah, oh, I just that's... don't know what they're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know, yeah, Tracy, yeah, we know. <laughs> the tone is still there. Still there, still the same. <laughs> hey, Zelly's in the chat. Welcome. Uh, we have another little cute memory from Danny. A few years ago, my mom got her best oh. cookie recipes turned into a small book and gave that to my siblings and I with a fancy rolling pin. I love that. Oh, these are such good gift ideas. Yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, our generation it should, you know, take it upon ourselves to, like, continue this stuff because it's so important and so... I don't know. It's just great to revisit later on in life. Yes. Oh, sure. bye, Joseph. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is so amazing. I love it. Um, Jeff McHugh's Maryland Crab Soup. So this is my grandfather on the other side, but um, he used to make uh, this crab soup in like pots as big as you are probably <gasps> so this is like if you can see they're short ribs one to two pounds of short ribs celery an entire bunch cool so if you like go to the next page there's a picture of him and my grandmother making the soup that's a big ass pot i can fit yes. in there yes <laughs> 
Also, her dress rules. Right? The dress, the glasses, the, like, little cat's eye glasses. What a vibe. Yes. Nanny and Bobby. Oh, yes. I love them. <laughs> yes, and Old Bay. We got to talk about Old Bay since you got a Mar- Marylander on stream. Yes. It's just it's good. Put it on things. And what is Old Bay, though, to folks who don't know that? Okay. <laughs> I know the most important part of Old Bay is the celery seed. There's like mm-hmm. celery seed. There's it's supposed to be for uh, mostly for like fish, fishy based things, but you can kind of put it on anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a spice we mix. We do. <laughs> uh, that is very famous where Kelly is from. <laughs> yes. And it's you know they sprinkle it on everything mm-hmm. like fish, seafood, seafood boils, chips. chips. Oh yeah, Old mm-hmm. Bay chips. Oh, I haven't had those in so long. Oh, yeah. Oh. So good. I should just make some. You should. Oh, yes. Dude, I have a deep fryer. I can just do that very quickly. Yes. Oh, sprinkle. We dump it on everything. Here's <laughs> the right idea. You're so right. Oh, yes. Oh, actually and had exactly. It. Yeah. 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 It, it definitely scrunches. Here we go. We got we got Lady Applesauce with the layup here. <laughs> yes, perfect. It's it's great. It comes the in like an ic- iconic yellow tin. Yellow tin. So my my one sister, uh, my one sister married a guy from high school. Like they have a prom picture with different dates, but they were in the same picture together, and now oh, they've been married for like ten years. That's cute. And then my other sister, her partner is from. Not around here. Uh, <laughs> but he just got introduced to Old Bay and now he's like obsessed. Okay, now I have to put it on all of the things. <laughs> and like for Christmas, she got him boxers that have Old Bay pattern on them. Oh, so. that's cool. Yes. They're like bright yellow, aren't they? Very bright sure. yellow and red. <laughs> um, a fun Old Bay thing that I do is sprinkle it on popcorn. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I've also done. So I've, I've, I've smoked my own bacon before. I usually try to do this around Christmas, uh-huh. but before you put it in the smoker, I like to coat it in a dry rub of Old Bay and more freshly cracked pepper. Yeah. And then you smoke it that I'm way. Just, I'm just thinking about yeah, that. Just, yeah. Fantasizing about some bacon, Old Bay bacon. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> that sounds so good. I'll have to convince my dad. He has a smoker, so I'll have oh, to be like... Oh, Awesome. That's so, that's so great. Yeah, I'm yes. glad your dad has this. What else is here? Oh. Hot milk sponge cake. I love how aged the recipe cards are. Like yes. they really got used here. <laughs> they they really got used, and also like like I said, some of it just might not be there, and you have to intuit it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this makes possibly like one of the best sponge cakes you've ever tasted. And the, the big deal is that you heat up the milk and the butter and you alternate, uh, you have your wet ingredients and you alternate adding uh, the milk and butter mm. and then the flour and you alternate adding those to like the eggs and everything oh. else. It makes like the fluffiest with the best top that's like moist and perfect and just mm. That's interesting. So I think this is another form of tempering so yeah like use like introducing a hot thing very slowly because you don't want to cook the eggs yeah definitely don't um so yeah that's that's i've never heard of somebody like just alternating the flour and the hot stuff but that that's another form of tempering which is yeah i think like one of the important notes on here is that you like start and finish with flour like you don't know how much you're adding you just have to do a little flour and then you start with flour and then at the end you end you have to finish with the flour otherwise it'll just be like wet yeah yeah i i think that's the note i haven't made it in a, a little bit but that is one of my favorite cakes and then i think the next one that we have is Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, Nanny Taylor oh, pound cake. Pound cake. So this is like a very old recipe. Like like my mom's note says, Nanny Taylor lived to be 104. This is hers from her family. So we don't we don't know how old it is, but it's like a, a pound and a half of butter. Yo, <laughs> one, of, one and a half cups of butter, five eggs, <laughs> half a cup of cornstarch. Oh, I love the recipe card that it's on. 
<laughs> yeah, again, my mom, so like her, her card catalog box, nothing is consistent. They're, they're all different sizes, yeah. <laughs> they're all different sizes. Like I was showing Jen earlier, I have my own recipe box. This was yeah! a gift from my mommy. Wait, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so you can have a bigger oh. a bigger view of the recipe box. Cause it's so yes. special. So cool. It's so special. It's a very nice wood. And it even has like a groove for you to put the recipe on top. On. Oh man, that's holds cool. it up for you. Yes. No, um, your mom found a really cool box. That is she, a really good box. She's so good at this. It does have sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like I wrote my, all of mine on the same type of note card that has a grid on the back just in case. Um, <laughs> and then I made my own dividers with like washi tape and everything. But hers does not have that. And you don't know where something's going to be filed. It, it might be under A for appetizer, or possibly <laughs> D for dip, or C for crab dip. D for, oh, C for crab dip. You don't know. <laughs> That's so good. That's such a mom way to address things. You're you, just like, yeah. I know where it is. You I know exactly know where, where it is. is. What are you I talking about, Kelly? <laughs> It's there. You're not looking. Oh my God. The thing my mom would always say is, uh, look with your eyes, not with your mouth. <laughs> Isn't that so catty? Yeah. My mom would say, you couldn't find water at sea, Kelly. Oh! <laughs> okay. Damn. Moms. <laughs> yes. Moms are rough. <laughs> Vicious. Damn. Well, so my dad also is very sometimes catty where uh, one time I was hung over for the first time. Oh no. And yeah. And uh, instead of my mom saying like, I don't know, whatever moms would say in that instance, he said, well, Cal, if you're going to run with the big dogs, you don't piss like a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> dad. What the hell dad? Savage. I'm already hung over. I'm already like you're already. Well, that's the point. Suffering. You just gotta ground, ground your nose into that. Be like, yeah, this dad. is what you did. Wow. Okay, Dad. Yes. Rough. Love you. <laughs> um, I just love how loved these recipes are. Like you can yes. see the drips. You can see the ink like smearing. I just. I don't know. This this really warms my heart. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I mean, because I don't really have this uh, in my family, and I'm trying to encourage people to to do this. Yes. Uh, oh, biscotti! You have an biscotti. aunt Valeria. <laughs> so she, technically, she was not my aunt. Oh, I yes, see. She also, stop talking. Hi, Kabon. He's trying. Hi, doggy. Um, so Aunt Valeria, I'm pretty sure she was a friend of my grandmother's from when she <laughs> was, yeah, from when she was like becoming a naturalized citizen. So in like her classes or whatever, like the Italians stuck together. And even I though my see. grandmother was French, she was French, half French, half Italian. So like, ah, you gotta, okay. you gotta stick with the crew. <laughs> Although I love she, this. Yeah. Um, she did also have like, uh, this lovely Persian woman in her naturalization classes and, um, you won't know who, who she is. Uh, she was one of the Shah of Iran's daughters, turns out, settled Whoa. in Baltimore. I don't know. Crazy. Weird stuff that my grandmother did. <laughs> Grandmas, they always just meet like people and you're like, how do you know them? That's crazy. Right. How do you know this person? Oh, don't, don't worry about it, honey. I know them from back in the day. Uh, okay. <laughs> I definitely have aunts and uncles that I'm not actually related to, but I call aunt and uncle anyway. It's yeah. just like, yeah, my family is so big. And um, my dad specifically, uh, he's, he hangs out with all of his college buddies still. And I grew up with all of them and their kids. And so they're all aunts and uncles to me. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of the time, if someone is coming with me to a family thing, they're like, are they your aunt aunt or like aunt and i'm like yeah, she's aunt just or, yeah aunt, or my fine. great aunt you know or my you know fourth cousin removed thing but i call her aunt because she's a generation older than me exactly yeah there's a lot of like honorifics in the philippines um kind of like how in japanese there's like 
like uh, the suffix, you know, like kun mm-hmm. or sama or dono, like, like those kinds of things. But uh, for us, it's like tito, tita, his older yes. aunt and uncle. Um, what else do we have? We have older sister, which is like ate, uh, kuya, older brother. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> it's it can it's get so fun. confusing as you get older, and you don't want people to call you don't want people to call you tita. <laughs> I'm, I'm very like I'm in Are that. Are you very realm. anti Tito right now? I'm very. I mean, I say it as a joke a lot, mm-hmm. but in in true fashion, I would be mortified if a young child was like Tita Jen. I'd be like, oh god, I'm not seventy. <laughs> I'm not that old. But then yeah. when you look at it, it's like, but am I? <laughs> Tracy, their seventh uncle. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Tagalog does have specific names for um, kind of the levels. Yeah, so Tita, Tito, uh, Lolo, Lola, that's grandfather, grandmother, or um, Nanay, Tatay, that's another dialect change for grandpa and grandma. Uh, so yeah, I don't know all of them, but there's a bunch. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mandarin does this too, great. Yeah, Fleen, you know what I'm talking about. Forever Ate. <laughs> Forever the big sister, not you know anything else and lola is definitely the worst <laughs> i am not lola jen oh no <laughs> lola I'm jen would be like this. something your younger cousins call you in like the cruelest way possible so mean. <laughs> i would just be like checking the wrinkles on my face like no 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 yes <laughs> uh let's see do we have any more do we have here oh, oh yeah. no i guess that was the last one that was it. Oh, but this this biscotti recipe, if you follow it, it's like basic. This is just like for your basic dough. And you can put in whatever. Like oh. Aunt Valeria loved to put in like anise seed or oh. you know, lemon. I've done it with lemon and then like dipping it in some like oh. lemon lemon juice, uh powdered sugar kind of guy. Oh, like a glaze. Like a yeah. uh, that's cool, cool, cool. That's, that's the word. The word. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome. I like having a base recipe that you can like riff off of and make your own. Yes, this is exactly that. And this is like my mom's little note was, Anne Valeria gave me this while sitting in her kitchen. I had to write very fast. (laughs) I can see that it's rushed. Yeah. Oh, mom. (laughs) 350, question mark, question mark. Yes. I love this. I love this. Uh, I'm going to bring us back to the full screen. Yes. Kelly, thanks so much for sharing that with us because that... It's so cool, like, the way that your mom documented all of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. Just, I'm going to obsess over the photos. I have them saved on my computer now, so I'm going <laughs> to print them out and be like, ah, I'm yeah. continuing the McHugh family traditions. <laughs> Do it. No, I'm so I'm so happy to share that. Like, that's what, that's what this was all for, was to be able to share it with, you know, people and food is love. And it's, you know, that's how to keep things going. I agree. It's a nice positive thing to focus on for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, we're nearing the end of the show, but Kelly, would you like to play a game? I would love to play a game, please. Ah! <laughs> okay, chat. Uh, let's play a round of Chopped. We're going to pretend we're on that TV show Chopped. So if you don't know what this is, um, on this TV show, there's like this mystery basket with four ingredients in it, and the chefs have to make a dish using those things. Um, So for our purposes, there's no wrong answer. So like we just want to use this as an exercise to um, see how far ingredients could go, like how many ideas we can come up with and maybe it might inspire your next meal. Who knows? Um, But chat, let's go. First four ingredients that you shout out will be the ones that we use. So sorry if you're too slow. Um, But yeah, uh, we'll go through each of the ingredients individually so everybody knows what you're working with. But feel free to just... Tell us how you'd combine two, three, or all four of the ingredients. And imagine you have like that Food Network kitchen, like fully equipped. You've got a pantry. You've got all the time you need. There's no time limit, you know, theoretically. We're just trying to come up with as many things, uh, uh, combinations of the, of the four items. So we're, we're going to- s- committed to the chopped. <laughs> We've got Owen with Spam. Oh, boy. We got a challenge here from Toys Durian. Dang. It's a tough, tough basket already. This tough is a basket. very tough basket. Tough basket. <laughs> um, for folks who don't know what spam is, it is a 
cured meat product that was made famous during wartime. It's very salty. Um, you, it's already fully cooked technically, uh, but you can fry it further. You can cube it. Um, you can do many things with it. Okay, seitan. Okay, we've got another protein in here. Seitan. I believe that one is wheat gluten based. Is that right? E yeah, gluten gluten based. <laughs> Plant-based meat substitute made from wheat gluten that mimics the flavor and texture of chicken. So the oh. way that, that is made, you uh, whip vital wheat gluten with a certain amount of water, depending on how the what kind of texture you want, and then you boil it or poach it in a very potent um, oh. stock. So you can do chicken flavor with like thyme, mm -hmm. <laughs> MSG, parsley, garlic, onion. You can do like. Um, seafoody flavor with like saffron you know so right. seitan is a very flexible plant protein Ooh. and then we've got fourth ingredient here scallions from tracy so folks how would you combine spam durian seitan and scallions in a dish oh yeah great way to remember this wheat meat that's what it is i love that um durian i've only had a few times but it's known for being a very pungent fruit uh, let me let me pull up a little bit more for us here so that we can uh, talk about it intelligently. The... I know it's illegal to eat on certain public transportation systems. And in elevators. <laughs> you cannot bring a durian in, in, a, in an elevator. Uh, edible fruit of several tree species belong to the genus Durio. There are 30 recognized mm -hmm. Durio species, uh, nine of which have edible fruit. Awesome. Uh, it's uh, known as the king of fruits. It's distinctive for its large size, strong odor, and thorn-covered rind. I love uh, a durian, like the look of a durian rind. It's so... It's like a danger fruit, and yes. I love that about it. Uh, here it says, on acquired taste, some people regard this durian as having pleasantly sweet fragrance, whereas others find the aroma overpowering and unpleasant. <laughs> uh, so it's a very Southeast Asian fruit. Let me find uh, some practical uses here. Cultivation flavor and uh, do, 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 do. give us a little flavor. Here we go. Five cells are silky white within, filled with a mass of firm cream colored pulp containing about three seeds each. The pulp is edible part. And it's con consistency and flavor are indescribable. <laughs> <It's> kind of like, <laughs> like a rich custard. Flavored Thanks, with twos. almonds. Rich custard flavored with almonds is the best general idea here from the description. What did Toast say? I've heard like, uh, he, well, he's the one who recommended durian for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pro does it sound like a weird protein bowl or protein shake? I mean, we very well could do a, bo a spam bowl. Mm -hmm. So like I said earlier, uh, silog is like the Filipino rice bowl dish. So it's garlic fried rice. You can do some fried spam mm. on there with a fried egg and scallions. See, look, we use two ingredients. <laughs> there we go. We go. Um, so that's kind of the game. Uh, so we have four ingredients. Think up as many ideas that you can using two, three or all four. Uh, no pressure whatsoever. So if you don't know what to do with something, don't use it. Um, could do a seitan bowl for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh. What if we did a spam and seitan banh mi? Ooh. Yeah. Yummy. Yes. Um, speaking of spam, it is closely related to scrapple, which you mentioned earlier. Yes. Can you explain scrapple to folks in the chat? We're not using it in the game, but I just want you to know what, what it is. But everyone should know what scrapple is. It is indescribable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it comes in a plastic, like vacuum sealed plastic bag and you slice it like a loaf mm. it's a loaf of pig bits uh mixed yeah. with like some flour some like binding agents but it has like it's really well spiced mm -hmm. and if warm you slice, spices right yeah, yeah yeah and it's like the perfect breakfast sandwich food because it's square so it fits on there perfect anyway yeah i would describe it as a sort of pate using like awful you know uh, organ meats but mm -hmm. uh it's bound together and it slices so well that you can fry it and it's it's not super fatty mm -hmm. so you have you do have to fry it in like a little bit of like butter or oil but it can get super crispy and like the crispy outsides are the best part mm -hmm. i agree i've done a scrapple banh mi before <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's really yes. good with pickled okay. carrot 
Oh, really, really good. Uh, oh, toes. <laughs> I'd probably follow, follow one of those Breath of the Wild recipes because at least one uses durian. I remember that, yeah. Yes. Uh, and this is the approach from Danny. Uh, put all the ingredients in your arms, throw them in a big walkover fire, and shake until you get a meal. <laughs> I mean, that makes perfect sense. If it this... works for Link, it works for us. This actually wouldn't be a bad stir-fry. It wouldn't be a bad stir fry. I would probably um, make like a sweet and sour sauce with the durian. Ooh, yeah. You know, cut it because it's it's quite, you know, pungent. So we would cut it with some like um, maybe some ground up peaches, um, some Thai chilies, add some sugar and reduce that down to a nice sweet and sour sauce um, and then do a stir fry with the seitan and the spam and the scallions. Stir fry sounds good, y'all. Um, oh, here. We got Lady Applesauce with a salad. Durian vinaigrette. Ooh. Okay, you're thinking the same thing as me. Because if you're going to uh, use durian in a vinaigrette, you need to bring it, uh, bring that flavor down with some acid. Yeah. Great. Fried Spam and Seitan. And scallions in the salad. Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. It's Great idea. So smart. <laughs> if, oh, and oh, Scrapple's kind of in that haggis meatloafy direction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But not poached in the organ itself. Yeah. It's it doesn't it doesn't have like a casing or anything, which is why I really like it because I so don't tell Jen. Don't tell Jen chat, but I don't like hot dogs. <gasps> Disown. I just did Kelly. I just did a bad. Good Kelly thing I waited is till... off the stream. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> First no. you say, first you insult me with mustard. I know. Second you insult me with Oof. disliking hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you come into my house and I dislike hot dogs. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. On the day of your daughter's wedding. On the day of my, on my stream. On the day of Attack the Pantry. How could I? <laughs> I know. Tracy's like, wow. <laughs> I know. I, did, I, I waited till the end of the stream. <laughs> Yeah, you waited. I made sure. <laughs> You're all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. Before I went vegetarian, pork roll was my go-to breakfast sandwich meat. Yes, it's really good on an egg, egg and cheese, egg and yes. cheese on a roll. Mm. So what's great about Baltimore is that you can get both pork roll and scrapple. Yo, it's like that perfect overlap. What? Yes. You can oh. do that in certain places. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So there are benefits to Baltimore. There are several. <laughs> there are kidding. three to four benefits of living in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Scrapple's one of them. <laughs> Old Bay Chips is the other. We've gone through all of them. I love I love your national foods of Baltimore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love. If, you, if you've ever seen uh like at Camden Yards, one of the one of the hot dogs that they sell there is a hot dog with mac and cheese <gasps> and then crab crumbled on top, like lump crab meat crumbled on top with Old Whoa, Bay and things. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lot. So anyway, you should come down to Baltimore and we could go see a ball game. Yeah, I'll go get a weird hot dog. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, okay, guys, uh, we are nearing the end of the stream, but I would love to hear a last call of ideas. Uh, how would you cook Spam, Durian, Seitan, and Scallions in the dish? Uh, how about we can we can make some Scallion oil? Ooh, yeah. Mm, scallion oil, fried Spam. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else we got here? What else can you do with Durian? I so mean, I've, I've mostly just seen it eaten raw. Eaten raw or like, I feel like I remember Anthony Bourdain eating it like on toast or something, almost oh. like a like a runny cheese kind of oh, deal. Cool. So like almost in that in that like a really heavy triple cream brie. I mean, yeah, the, the description was custardy, so that sounds right, like a like kind of a sweet toast. And then maybe topping that with either the spam or seitan or. And then you have like a nice little toast point. Oh, yeah. I'm into that. I'm so mm -hmm. into that. <laughs> I I made like a noodle. I made pancit, which is like glass noodles uh, with seitan before. Because um, I used to cater over at Kickstarter. Like their office is, is near here. So um, one day they asked for like a fully vegan lunch. And so I made um, kind of like a curry flavored seitan. Mm. Are these glass noodles? 
Wow. So, yeah. Yes. We could do that. We could do glass noodle seitan with some scallions. Yes, um, definitely. Great. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Uh, we got more ideas here. Uh, oh, Zelly, you don't have to use everything. So you can just use two things if you're, you know, if you got an idea. Ooh, okay, here we go. Uh, maybe in a pastry, like mm -hmm. a meat dim sum. All that about that. That sounds good. That sounds real good. Spam cup with durian sugar. <laughs> That's just rude. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I always see durian filled pastries at dim sum as a dessert, but maybe you can make it savory, like a pop tart. You could totally f flip that savory. Mm. Yeah. I would add like lots of chilies because I just like fruit and chili flavor. Yes. Yeah. Def. Um, toast points with various toppers is a great pitch for this basket. Yeah. Definitely. Tea sandwiches. <laughs> or you make the spam into the piece of bread. It's <laughs> a spam point. Like a like a um, double down. Yes. You remember the remember the double down? Yes. I I ran to a KFC when I when that came out. I I freaking ran. I ran of to the course. KFC. I was like, listen, what if we had a spam double down with Satan in the middle and call it the blasphemer? Oh my god. <laughs> And That's like terrible. the scallions are just like chopped in there where, where it's just like, you're going to, you know, it's just there. It's part you of have the to thing. have at least like one partially green thing involved. <laughs> yeah. That's my vegetable requirement. Tick. <laughs> yeah. Done. Ooh, Danny on a cool track. My brain is slow today, but thinking of some kind of scallion pancake dish that incorporates the rest. Mm. We could do a stuffed scallion pancake. <laughs> Or even yes. just scallion pancake sandwich. We have mm, that yeah. here. Um, there's a Chinese place, uh, M Noodle, uh, here in Brooklyn that does sesame scallion pancake sandwiches. Oh my gosh. So yes. good. I love their roast pork one. It's almost like a, you could make it crepe like almost. <laughs> Owen, we're, I'm, we're so really sorry, Owen. Owen. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Owen. I'm so sorry, Owen. I'm so sorry. Ruining his night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We've just like made you Google so much stuff. Oh my god, that's so funny. I'm so hugely sorry. American centric of us. Yeah. And honestly, oh my god. Like, how dare us? How dare us? Very rude stream tonight. Uh, oh, Zelly pizza. Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, Anything's durian pizza. on pizza is like pineapple on pizza. Um, yes. but I would probably pickle the durian. Or, you know, kind of stave off that uh, uh, pungent smell somehow by soaking yeah. it in other things. Yeah, but scallion pancakes always gonna win. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm educating myself on your culture. <laughs> <laughs> if this I is am... a cultural export, I do apologize. I am skull emoji about this. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. such a skull emoji. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Uh... <laughs> Uh, our dark rituals uh, shall be further unmentioned. Like, I I feel like I ruined a lot of stuff for you tonight, Owen. <laughs> but, but hey, we gave him Chex Mix. We gave him Scrapple. We gave him... A double down. A double down. <laughs> uh, uh, fantastic. Um, at least we didn't mention Four Loco. Oh, God. Yeah. Four Loco. Jeez. Oh yeah, egos. Yeah. Egos are a good thing. That's a egos positive. That's good. a net positive for you. Egos are fantastic. Um, but that brings us to the end of our stream today. Folks, thank you so much for hanging out with me and this goof, Kelly. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kelly, is there anything you would like to uh, tell the people? I think, here we go. I got a link for you. At we least. got a link. That's my Instagram. Um, I I paint. That's kind of my fun stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I make paintings like this. Cute. 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 And it's silvery. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, like, I'm on Twitter. I'm Kelly McKelly on Twitter, but, like, I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you I do. Just, I just you, hang out. You're around, and you you mod our Discord, which is the Fun City Discord, folks. So if you don't yes. listen to our podcast, I'm at funcity.ventures, uh, yes. and you can check it out. 
Uh, and if you join our Patreon, you get access to that Discord specifically, and you will meet Kelly. At and we the have door. lots of fun. <laughs> and we have like, lots of fun. In in the galley, which is where we sequester all food talk. Today we talked about uh, this guy. Two's found this guy on Reddit who took a chicken bake from Costco, cut off one end of it, and then popped a hot dog in there. <laughs> so I feel like that is a variation of a soup dog. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I'm all it's, about it. I'm so yeah. about it. That's I need to go do that. I I I immediately thought I need to bring this up to Jen. I need to do that. Crazy. We're going bake. to Costco. <laughs> Let's go to Costco right now. We're going to Costco. Um I love that. Um but yeah, folks, if you want to keep in touch with Kelly, you can join the Fun City Discord and Kelly will be there. Yes. Um or you can also follow on Instagram and see all these lovely watercolors. Um yeah. yeah, and sometimes it, it, they're for sale. But sometimes yeah. they're for sale. You know, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, but thanks so much for hanging out with us, you all. Um, I'll be back next week. Here we're gonna we're gonna quickly tell you about the next guests. Uh, next week on the twenty fifth, we've got the hosts of Kill Every Monster, which is a really fun <laughs> podcast. Uh, I was on their Mike and Ids episode where I got to play a giant myconid that tried to kill one of their characters. It was it was really fun. Um, after that, uh, in February, we've got Joseph, who was here in the chat earlier. We're going to be talking about music and uh, making food. It's going to be fun. Um, and then in February 15th, on February 15th, excuse me, my friend Abby Balingit is going to be here talking about her Filipino cookbook, Mayumu. Uh, and I'm so excited for that. My goodness. Um, but thanks everybody for hanging out. Um, stay tuned. We're going to raid the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So uh, <laughs> stick around for some fish. Uh, I think it's the seashore camera. So uh, you can uh, continue watching for that. But for now, uh, we'll see you next Wednesday here on Attack the Pantry. Bye, Bye everybody. I'm going to blip Kelly off. Bye. And me.